In the world of music production, achieving clarity and precision in sound is everything. Yet achieving good sound in a studio, especially one filled with acoustic challenges like this one, was something that I'd almost given up on. That was until the last two weeks when I finally got my hands on a device that transformed my studio experience. This is the Trinov Nova. It is a hardware digital signal processing device that comes with its own proprietary microphone that you use to listen to your acoustic environment. What it measures in your space, it automatically computes and creates a correction curve that it applies to any signal passing through it to your speaker system. In this video, we're gonna take a deeper look at how it works and how it sounds. A quick disclaimer about this video. This is not paid for or sponsored at all. I'm just really passionate about DSP and Trinov is at the cutting edge of DSP room correction in studio as well as home theater. So I reached out to Trinov to ask them whether I could get my hands on a demo unit and they redirected me to Peter from AVP Imports here in Australia. He very kindly sent me one. Both Trinov and AVP offered very quick and professional service. I even got the chance to meet Peter, which was great, and talk about Trinov as well as studios. But this video is not sponsored and I don't have a Nova in my studio anymore. I just purely borrowed it and then returned it. On the back of the Trinov, it features four TRS balanced inputs. Two balanced XLR inputs, digital inputs such as ADAT or SPDIF on optical, as well as SPDIF on coaxial. You can also connect it via Ethernet using Dante. For outputs to your speakers, there are six XLR balanced outputs. When you get the device, only two of these are active and you'll need to pay for an expansion to use the additional ones. So if you're using multiple pairs of monitors and you've got mains with subwoofers, You'll need to consider the fact that you may need additional licenses depending on how many outputs you require to correct your full system. Another thing to consider is that it doesn't come with a control interface. You can control it using the software, but that's not so user friendly. If you'd like a volume dial, you can purchase a device Trinov call La Remote, which offers control of the unit. It's also user customizable in Trinov software, so you've got all of the control you need at your fingertips. You're also going to need to purchase or borrow Trinov's proprietary microphone, as you can't use any other microphone with it. It connects via Ethicon to the front of the device. I connected the Trinov to my system using Dante, and something worth mentioning is you need to route things inside a Dante controller as well as obviously run Dante Virtual Sound Card. On Windows, I was able to use DVS with ACO inside of Ableton. And on my desktop, I was able to use Windows drivers with DVS to get desktop audio. The calibration process is very straightforward. Once I had everything connected, I downloaded the software from Trinov's website and it walks you through the calibration process. If you've ever done sonar works, that's quite a convoluted process and it takes about 30 minutes of multiple measurements. The Trinov, by comparison, plays three noise bursts in each speaker and the whole process is over in about a minute. Once that's done, you click calculate and it will analyze the measurements it took and create the calibration filters. Once the calculation is complete, you can turn the optimization system on and it will process any audio that passes through it. Once I completed this process, the first thing that I wanted to do was shoot out the Nova's internal converters versus the RME ADI2 Pro that I use in my studio. I used an SPL meter to balance the output of both Dante and my sound card so that they were volume matched. And then I played some test tracks to listen and it was pretty immediately obvious to me that I actually couldn't really pick one over the other. I felt like I noticed more detail and depth, especially in the reverb when I was listening to Trinov's conversion using Dante, but otherwise there was nothing that was super obvious to me. So I decided to proceed with the most direct signal path. 
Listening to the correction the Trinov applied in my room was nothing short of confronting. And I've measured my studio plenty of times before, and I can definitely hear significant problems, especially around 160 hertz. But I have had no idea how significant the effect that low frequencies were having on the rest of the audio spectrum. The masking that was occurring was seriously limiting my ability to hear detail in the mid-range, and my stereo image was smeared very badly. In a way, I was experiencing Stockholm Syndrome in relation to my uncorrected room, because the first time the Trinov optimizer was turned on, it seemed unnatural or incorrect. It's the first time that I'd heard heard this room with a relatively flat bass response, and I guess to an extent, also my speakers. This image is the Trinov off. It's the SPL and phase graph. It's got psychoacoustic smoothing applied to it. You can see in the bass region around 45 hertz, I've got a significant boost in that frequency range. And then I've got a massive cut around 73 hertz. And so these massive dips and troughs are a huge problem in my room. That's 15 decibels of variation. Uh, and then you can see around uh, 160 hertz. This is the main problem that I hear in my room. Uh, it doesn't look so bad in the graph, but audibly it's really bad. And you can see that it's just really rippling all the way through. It's not exactly flat. This is a waterfall graph. We're using a 300 millisecond window here. You can see from 200 hertz and above, we've got basically a 120 millisecond decay time, which isn't really too bad. But once you get below that, we've got significant ringing happening around 160 hertz. This, again, like I'm saying, is the most audible thing in the room. Um, and 145 hertz is really a significant problem. You can see that the decay uh, moves outside of the window time. This is the graph of the Trinov turned on. It's the SPL and phase graph with psychoacoustic smoothing applied. And you can see here we've got the 85 decibel line and the uh, frequency response is very close to hugging that line. So you can see it's significantly flatter than what it was before. You can also take a look down here at the, the phase uh, response graph. You can see this is zero degrees here. So you can see from like 17 or 16 kilohertz all the way down to like 160 hertz. It's more or less um, completely within um, acceptable range. It does kind of drift a little bit out of phase um, below that, but it's really uh, been significantly changed to how it was prior to the Trinov being turned on. Here we've got the Trinov turned on looking at a waterfall graph, and we've got 300 millisecond time like before. We can see from 200 hertz and above, it's more or less the same at 120 millisecond decay, decay time. Oh, 120 to 180 at least. Um, but then down below, you can see, especially around 145 hertz, which was a significant problem before, it's really been reduced a lot in terms of its decay time. It still moves beyond the window of the graph, but you can see the intensity of the energy is much less. Um, you see 90 hertz as well here is ringing out pretty badly still too. This is all of the different measurements overlaid. And so you can see the Trinov in red. In green, you've got no uh, a treatment at all applied. And in blue, you've got Sonarworks, which I thought was quite an interesting comparison. Now, uh, red is obviously the flattest response. Blue, not too bad, but in the uh, low frequency area, it's really still not controlling that room mode. Um, and then you can see this strange kind of phenomena that's happening uh, above 10K. The Trinov is getting really like reduced above 10K, whereas the other two really like kind of pull back up and, and um, are boosted around there. So it's kind of interesting. I'm not sure exactly what's happening there in the room, but that is the frequency response overlaid. So you can see uh, everything in a direct comparison. 
To recap, what I noticed the most was the low frequency masking that was being cleared up, which allowed me to hear so much more clarity in the mid range of my speaker system. And the transients were far more precise and easy to pinpoint in the stereo field. It also gave me a newfound appreciation for my speakers, the Neumann KH310s. The combination of the Trinov with these speakers was really awesome to behold. I spent a considerable amount of time listening to music for leisure through the system, but I also made sure that I got stuck into some tracks that I'd been working on inside of Ableton. Producing with the optimizer on increased my sense of confidence that there was definitely a right or wrong move to make in regards to my production. And I could clearly distinguish what was best for the mix. That leads me to the downsides of the Nova. First would be the latency. If you're a musician and you're playing into your door, I imagine you're going to have some trouble with it. And if you can bypass the process and get around it, that's great. But it's just something to keep in mind that you would have to keep bypassing and unbypassing. With this kind of heavy digital signal processing, unfortunately, there's no way around latency. The next thing I noticed was a very audible hiss. When my speakers are connected to my RME sound card and I'm sitting in my listening position, which is about a meter away from the speakers, I hear absolutely nothing, but when the Trinov was connected, the hiss was audible and it bothered me. Finally, it's still very cost prohibitive, even though the Nova is significantly cheaper than the other studio devices Trinov offer. And it's especially expensive when you factor in the microphone and the La Remote. But if you're a mixing and mastering engineer and you're taking your craft seriously, this device should be in your studio. It's a no-brainer to me. I can only imagine how powerful this device is when implemented into a studio that has already been professionally designed and acoustically treated. If you're a serious audiophile and you haven't spent all your money listening to cables, you should also consider a Trinov Nova. So that's my summary for the Trinov Nova. It's a fantastic device and it's really amazing what it can do to your audio system. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in a video.